the Dhammapada, the Buddhist path of wisdom, translated from the Pali by Acharya Buddha Karakita, with an introduction by Bhikkhu Bodhi. From ancient times to the present, the Dhammapada has been regarded as the most succinct expression of the Buddhist teaching found in the Pali Canon in the chief spiritual testament of early Buddhism. In the countries following Theravada Buddhism, such as Sri Lanka, Burma, and Thailand, the influence of the Dhammapada is ubiquitous. It is an ever fecund source of themes for sermons and discussions, a guidebook for resolving the countless problems of everyday life, a primer for the instruction of novices in the monasteries. Even the experienced contemplative withdrawn to forest hermitage or mountainside cave for a life of meditation can be expected to count a copy of the book among his few material possessions. Mm. Uh, let's see. The expounder of the verses that comprise the Dhammapada is the Indian sage called the Buddha, Buddha, an honorific title meaning the enlightened one or awakened one. The story of this venerable personage has often been overlaid with literary embellishment and the admixture of legend, but the historical essentials of his life are simpler and clear. He was born in the 6th century BC, the son of a king ruling over a small state in the Himalayan foothills in what is now Nepal. His given name was Siddhartha and his family name Gautama, Sanskrit Siddhartha Gautama, Gautama, Gautama. Raised in luxury, groomed by his father to be the heir to the throne. In his early manhood, he went through a deeply disturbing encounter with the sufferings of life as a result of which he lost all interest in the pleasures and privileges of rulership. One night in his 29th year, he fled the royal city and entered the forest to live as an ascetic, resolved to find a way to deliverance from suffering. For six years, he experimented with different systems of meditation and subjected himself to severe austerities, but found that these practices did not bring him any closer to his goal. Finally, in his 35th year, while sitting in deep meditation beneath a tree in, at Gaya, he attained supreme enlightenment and became, in the proper sense of the title, the Buddha, the enlightened one. Thereafter, for 45 years, he traveled throughout northern Europe proclaiming the truths he had discovered and founding an order of monks and nuns to carry on his message. Uh, to the followers, uh, to his followers, the Buddha is neither a god, a divine incarnation, or a prophet bearing a message of divine revelation, but a human being who by his own striving and intelligence has reached the highest spiritual attainment of which a man is capable. Perfect wisdom, full enlightenment, complete purification of mind. Okay, so we're going to read uh, the first uh, two verses of the Dhammapada. The Dhammapada, which the ancient compilers of the Buddhist scriptures attached to our anthology, means portions, aspects, or sections of the Dhamma. The work has been given this title because in its 26 chapters it spans the multiple aspects of the Buddha's teaching, offering a variety of standpoints from which to gain a glimpse into its heart. Hmm. The 26 chapter headings thus function as a kind of rubric for classifying the diverse poetic utterances of the Master. And the reason behind the inclusion of any given verse in a particular chapter is its mention of the subject indicated in the chapter's heading. So, let's see, chapter, let's see, 
So I'm going to go to the first chapter, and it's called Pairs. That's the Pairs. That's the headings of that chapter. That I believe that means that, that the verses are in pairs. I'll go to the first pair. Okay, the first. First pair is, is verse 1 and 2. Mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. If with an impure mind a person speaks or acts, suffering follows him like the wheel that follows the foot of the ox. Verse 2, mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. If with a pure mind a person speaks or acts, happiness follows him like his never departing shadow. Let me uh, read it again. Both of them. Number one. Mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. If with an impure mind a person speaks or acts, suffering follows him like the wheel that follows the foot of the ox. Number two. Mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. If with a pure mind a person speaks, or acts, happiness follows him like his never departing shadow. Hmm. Okay.